Okay, today we are going to brew a simple pale ale with two malts and two hop additions using the brew in a bag or BIAB method. As the name suggests, we put the crushed grain in a nylon mesh bag and then immerse that in the kettle like a giant tea bag. Well, actually we put the bag in first and then pour the grains into that, but you get the idea. These nylon mesh bags are available at your local hardware store. They're sold as uh, paint strainer bags. They're five gallons. Um, bags like this are also available at your local homebrew supply shops. So you have two options for those. As I mentioned earlier, the base malts need to be mashed, which means they need to be held in a specific temperature range for an hour to allow the natural enzymes in the malt to convert the barley starches to sugars. Specialty malts like this caramel malt do not need to be mashed at a specific temperature. Specialty malts have already had their starches converted to sugars during the malting process. They can simply be steeped like tea at any temperature, hot or cold, but including them in the mash is convenient. Here is the recipe that I'm going to use today. It is called Joe Cool Pale Ale and consists of two malts, a base malt and a caramel malt, and three hop additions, one for bittering, one for flavor, and a steeping addition after the boil for more hop aroma. This recipe uses American ale yeast and will make two and a half gallons or 10 liters of a four and a half percent alcohol by volume beer. This beer will be more bitter than your typical lager but less bitter than an IPA style. The water has been heated to about 158 degrees Fahrenheit or 70 degrees Celsius. Our target mash temperature is between 150 and 155 degrees Fahrenheit or 65 to 67 degrees Celsius. Generally you want your strike water to be 5 to 10 degrees hotter than your ma target mash temperature because the temperature will come down when you stir in the grain. Turn the heat off before you put in the bag and stir in the grain. Okay. Okay, the way this works is we're going to put the bag in the kettle and then pour in the grain and stir it to make sure it's fully wetted. If we put the grain in the bag first and then put it in, there would probably be dry grain in the middle and that potential sugar would be lost. Look how cloudy this looks. As the mash progresses, uh, this will clear and the wort will start smelling sweeter. Cover the mash with the lid and let it sit. You should stir and check the temperature about every 15 minutes. If the temperature falls below 150 degrees or 65 degrees Celsius, then raise the bag and turn on the burner for a few minutes. You don't want the bag to melt against the bottom. When the temperature is back above 150 or 65, then cover it and let it rest again. Okay, 15 minutes has gone by. I'm going to check this. Oh yeah, we're good. Temperature is pretty stable at this mass. I bet some of you are wondering, hey John, why can't we just make beer out of specialty malts so we don't have to mash? Yes, you could, but going back to our sandwich analogy, making a beer from just specialty malts would be like eating a spoonful of jelly compared to eating the whole peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Beer needs the balance between the sweet and bitter, malty and hoppy.
At the end of the hour, you will see that the wort has cleared considerably. There will still be grain bits floating around, but the wort has gotten darker and it smells sweeter. You can see how it's cleared up. Now it is time to lift out the grain bag and let it drain. If you don't want to hold it, you can place it in a strainer, but make sure the strainer is clean before you do. I recommend that you keep your brewing equipment separate from your cooking equipment to prevent off flavors. Don't make a big batch of chili in your brew kettle unless you like chili beer. Yeah, I know the feeling. Okay. Well, there we are. Now we've made our wort and we're ready to begin the boil.